We had a conversation with veteran artist Timothy Fasiri and he shared his thoughts about the art sector as well as how to make the industry more vibrant. His name may not be as popular as others in his league, but that doesn't make him any different. The creativity is definitely not in short supply and the passion has spanned decades. My artwork started back to maybe 70 years ago. When I was young, uh, we used to visit our grandfather who was the chief craftsman of Venetia. His title was a solo of his honor. We used to learn a few crafts uh, from him and uh, from there I developed interest. I went through primary school, through secondary school, still developing the interest. After secondary education at Elisha uh, Grammar School, we went to AB uh, Zaria. We were the first set of students to go for art at Zaria. The school was then Nigerian College of Arts, Science and Technology. Uh, at the beginning, we were about 23, but um, suddenly, in 1957, there was this Lelupon accident that reduced the number to about 11. Many of them died during the uh, Lelupon. So my art was based on my training in Zaria. Now, 80 works of art show what Timothy Fashi has been up to in the last 50 years painting his heart out, still tutoring younger ones in his little corner, and giving back to the society. The type of work I've been doing, I saw people, but I retired from the ministry, and I'm now painting. Um, I do more work painting, and I can say, well, I don't know, I should have over 100 works of my, of my painting I've done over the years, starting from 1960, uh, to now, in different stages, some of them two or three or four. They are all in my gallery here or in Lisha. And takes us down memory lane. About six of us in Lagos got together to form what you call the Society of Nigerian Artists. And we used to have a meeting of our societies, exhibitions here and there. We organized lectures to enlighten people about the value the importance of art, and this we did uh, all over Lagos for the period. As a professional artist, I participated in all the exhibitions mounted by the Society of Nigerian Artists. And at one time, the federal government sponsored about eight of us to do a type of touring art exhibition around some European countries. The works reflect the current state of his art, pieces that talk about issues in the society as he feels everyone should try to play a more active role to make the world a better place as there's too much lip service to the cause. The time to act is now. I've drawn a lot of inspiration from being a son because literally I'm, I'm, I'm a collector of arts and I've been doing this for the past 25 years. Everywhere he went, he brought a a, 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 a an artwork or the other. So that has inspired me over time to also be a collector. So anywhere I also go to, I uh, try to pick one or two pieces of art from uh, those places. So I have a wide variety of collections spanning Africa and mostly West Africa. Every other thing he does, I mean, this for instance, the, the, the beggar man, very rich, very, tells a tale of what is happening in contemporary times. People begging to survive you know, in the midst of plenty. And I think he tries to capture the other one there is um, people going home after trading for the day. So it's contemporary, his thoughts are contemporary. The passion for sustaining a legacy is a generation next project. For this place is being run by his son, Wally, who has curates exhibitions for other artists, including his father. We encourage artists to come and have exhibitions here. We are not um, cut truth people. It's not all about the, 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 the profit motive. It's just to encourage budding artists, you know, 
to, to, to climb up the ladder so that we can have many more of the honor buyers, many more of the grillos, many more of the Oshinawas, many more of the overrides, you know, coming up. And that, that's for us, it's, a, it's more than the profits, you know, aspect of it. It's also a pleasure to see the mixed media works the older fashiri is able to churn out. Gray is a symbol of wisdom, but his ability to still produce this quality and quantity of works speaks volumes. If you look at his works, they are of varying dimensions. I mean, it does a lot of abstracts, it does a lot of life, it does, a lot, like he said, he draws a lot of inspiration from things that happen around him. And uh, if you check his, his works, they are, he does most of the works in acrylic on, on canvas or on board. And most of them have themes that relate to everyday um, life experience. And I think that some of them are experiences that he had gathered along the line. So his works are, and I think they are rich in colors. He uses most of art color, uh, uh, colors, and he, he does, uh, of course, depending on his mood. Well, if you, there's no age limit to creativity, if your mind is still all right, you can think, and you can uh, think uh, creatively. There's no age limit to it. You are either dead or you are alive. If you are alive, you'll be thinking. So I don't see age as a type of limiting factor. Unless you are physically handicapped, you are, if you have stroke and you cannot move your hand, if you have anything, any element that is stopping you. But I don't think age is this. In fact, age is the best. I'm talking of my age now. At 80, I think it's the best age to paint. Why? Because I have no need, I have no anxiety for getting money to build the house or to train my children or to do this thing. So what I paint now is authentic uh, painting for me based on what I want to paint. Not necessarily because somebody wants me to paint or because somebody wants to give me a commission. So age has nothing to do with it, and I think I'm coping well with uh, my painting now, better than I used to be when I was working uh, with the government or when I was uh, uh, running schools at Elysia. Not just a pleasure ride for the eyes, but a charitable gesture and a lesson for the younger artists in dedication and determination is that to make a difference in the world begins with the man in the mirror. You can enjoy Art House on any of these platforms. Next week on Art House. Iconic figures like Maya Angelou, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr. and Chinua Achebe are displayed in Akintunde Odeshala's exhibition at the National Museum. The yesterday is something I'm trying to talk about what has been happening in the past, which has to do with civil war, you understand? Because there are some things in the society that I feel that are not right, you understand? So, to an extent, I found it challenging that if this continues, how do we secure the future of the children? Then, Kweju Alatishe shows us her recent body of works in this exhibition organized by Art House Contemporary. Well, Kweju is one of our best known artists, she's a leading contemporary artist in Lagos. She's done exceedingly well. Um, as you can see from the works, you know, they're not only just aesthetically pleasing, but they've also got uh, a very strong social and political value. And I think for me that is the beauty of art because art should be able, to be able to shape society in a positive way. Do join us again. And that's how we wrap up this week's edition of the program. But always remember you can see this edition or any other one on our YouTube page. Plus, keep sending those images and don't forget to put the correct description of those works of art in as you send them. I'm Melinda Akinami. Have a lovely day. <laughs>